Today I am making glazed sprinkles, or that's what I've been calling them there. My take on the Mako Crystal range, which is where you get um, fragments of one glaze inside another. Um, and they're quite an interesting concept. They're something, it was some of the first glazes I ever tried because they look so interesting. Uh, and they they do it with earthenware but I figured out a way of doing it myself and it's basically by uh, sintering a glaze so sintering is the equivalent of bisking so what I do is I mix up a glaze dry it out and then break it into chunks and fire it in a bisque firing and if you get the chemistry for the glaze right to match your bisque firing temperature they sinter into chunks that are still porous, they haven't melted, which means they don't fuse together, but they are like bisqueware in that the difference between a dried normal glaze is that you add water to it and it becomes liquid again. But if you sinter a glaze and then you can add water to it and it will absorb some of the water, but it won't become runny again. Meaning you can chuck a handful of these chunks into uh, another glaze and they will stay distinct, they have distinct lumps. So I will post the recipe for this that I'm testing. This is for a cone 06 bisque, so I'm bisking to a thousand C. Um, and it's to be coloured, I originally did this with to be coloured by stain. In fact, I forgot the you can see here these chunks. So this is pink stain. Uh, it turns out the stain's a bit too wishy-washy to um, you know, get the punch of colour that I got in the original one, which I'll include a picture of, which is cobalt. The problem is that the colourants are fluxes in their own right, so you, you have to take account of that when designing the glaze. So I'm hoping this one that I designed for stains is going to work with um, non-fluxing colorants. In this case, I'm using uh, zirconium. I have what Pottery Craft called call Zircosil 5, but zirconium silicate, uh, which is very refractory as a colorant. So it'll be white, but very solid white. And the important thing is it won't flux the glaze. So the chemistry that I did for the stain will probably work for this one. So I'll be testing this. I'll post the recipe. Um, you need to modify it to match your bisque temperatures. And if you don't know how to do that, take a ceramic materials workshop class, you'll learn. Um, the alternative is just take all the glazes you have, put a little bit of them in a bisque firing and see how they behave. What you're looking for is this sort of powdery um, so it almost looks like nothing's happened to it, but if you add some water to it, they stay solid, they don't dissolve. And so that's how you can tell you've done it right. So if they become glassy, you've gone too far, they'll probably all fuse together, you won't be able to break them up. But if they're still matte, but not capable of dissolving in water, you've got it right. Um, and yeah, the chemistry is quite simple, but you need to kind of understand the overall chemistry really to to get it right. So I'll do this um, in fast motion because I'm going to put mask on um, and I'll post the recipe. Next thing to do is get something to dry it in. I'm just using these old cheap oven trays because uh, you can obviously heat them. So you could stick it in an oven if you wanted. Doesn't matter. Well, actually, it probably does. I'm going to sieve it just in case. This stage probably doesn't matter unless you've got a really clumpy ingredient in there, uh, none of which is true of these ingredients. 
but um, probably still worthwhile just in case. But the idea is to now put this somewhere it can dry and I have a kiln currently cooling down it's only kind of like um, 100 C obviously don't put them in a full firing but they're an oven tray so I mean that's good for a few hundred degrees so that's going to go and sit in the kiln until it's dry I have decided there's going to be more than enough there for me to be getting on with for the next few rounds of glaze tests and so I'd recommend that unless you know for certain you don't want the bigger chunks um, you can either bisque everything together and then separate them afterwards but what's probably worth doing is getting to this stage where you've got a real assortment of chunks left in there and you're finely sorted I mean, I say fine, those are still like a, a decent chunk. You wouldn't get them through a, a commercial glazed sieve. Um, they're far too big for that, much bigger than any specs of glazed ingredients you'd get. Probably about on the sort of level if you bought a specifically coarse material like coarse manganese to put speckles in, they're probably that sort of size. But obviously these chunks are much, much bigger. Set those aside. Um, don't crush them all until you know that you don't want bigger chunks because bigger chunks will give you a different glaze effect um, and if you can find really coarse sieves so you can sieve this grade and then sieve those to get an even bigger grade which um, I've lost it now but uh, somewhere I have a glaze ingredient tub that I drilled um, I think it's five mil holes in the lid of and if you shove those in the tub um, you can shake them out and you'll get lumps that are sort of because it's five mil as a maximum dimension you get sort of uh, those size chunks which are probably a bit big for a normal glaze to keep in suspension but a thick mix of glaze can just about do it and they'll give you obviously much bigger bursts of of that glaze. Um, so you can make your own gradient, gradient sieving by drilling different holes in things if you can be bothered. Um, but I do find that this size is a nice size uh, and hopefully at some point I'll have edited in a picture of the um, blizzard glaze that I made with them last year uh, to give you an idea of how big the specs come out when they're sieved like that. Right, so I've got the first tests of that back. That's the pink base, and hopefully you can see it clearly in there. That's the one with uh, the spiracles at 3%, and I think I could go a bit higher with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in 5% sprinkles into the whole batch and dip it. And then that's the blue, and then that's the blue with, I didn't quite have enough for 3% sprinkles in that so I think that's too blue too like it's got lots of cobalt in it so what I've done is I've re, uh, reworked the glaze slightly so there's a bit more manganese a tiny pinch of chrome and half the cobalt so what it should be is more blue grey than this pure cobalt blue but hopefully you can see uh, you're getting some nice speckles in there also the surface quality isn't quite as glossy smooth as I'd like um, which I'm hoping having less cobalt and using cobalt carbonate rather than cobalt oxide will help with so I've got revised one of those and then these are with bigger sprinkles which there are far fewer of because they're heavier and sink to the bottom they don't get taken up in the same way so I'm going to stick with the fine sprinkles which I now have more of I'm going to sieve and add 
um, five percent of the fine sprinkles to the revised dark blue and then, and then rather than using a test tile for this I'm just going to dip a little shot glassy thing this comes back to what I was saying in the previous I can't remember. I think it might have been the glaze making video about having uh, different sized pots and why it's so useful is because I've only mixed up 100 grams so this is still a test amount of the glaze but it should be enough in this pot to um, dip the whole piece in because the piece will displace enough um, the, the depth of the glaze will increase as you plunge the piece in and it should end up being sufficient. So, you can't sift the glaze once you've added the sprinkles because you'll just sift the sprinkles back out again. here so I can just add five grams they're still absorbent so the glaze mix will get a bit thicker as a result of doing this now has lumps in it which normally would be a bad thing but um, so wipe it around with a sponge to make sure there's no dust on it because it's been sat for a while and what you've got is a glaze application with lots of spots in it, which normally would not be a good thing, but in this case, it's exactly what we want. is what where it focuses um, but that's what it looks like before it's been fired and the good thing is that um, this is going straight into a firing so I'll know tomorrow right, it's fired and that is the end result of the glaze you can see colour wise Hopefully you can see, um, get these a bit closer, the difference that dropping the cobalt slightly and increasing the manganese, so that's like almost a, a purely cobalt blue whereas you've got the blue grey of that one is what I wanted. The surface quality is still not there. Um, exactly how I want it but the speckles are coming through as planned um, so I'm going to revise the base again slightly uh, probably decrease alumina just a bit and maybe a bit more boron but you don't want to make it too runny or the speckles won't keep their position the reason that it's quite a stiff base is intentional so that they don't flow 
because otherwise what you end up with smears instead of spots.